I'm going to be reading from Mark 9, 38 to 50. No, I forgot my other part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A reading from the Gospel of Mark. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, Whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you cause one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it will be better for you if a great milestone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Hear what God is saying to the people Thanks be to God. Let me offer a word of prayer. God, thank you for this morning, even though some of us are not morning persons. But put it into perspective. We don't understand that you never sleep. We don't understand many things. But we open our hearts and our minds to you, seeking that wisdom. So thank you so much for this morning. Use me, speak to me, and speak to all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, um, we can approach this uh, passage with a different perspective. But for me, it's one of the words that is at the end. Salt. So we know that salt in history has been used uh, for many Reasons, but one of them in the past was to preserve food. And at one point in history, salt was used as a payment because it was so valuable. But during our days, we use salt mainly for seasoning. Well, some preservatives we have in the Hispanic Latino culture, especially in Puerto Rico, we have the bacalao. Oh, yeah, that codfish in salt is preserved in salt. And if the codfish doesn't have salt, um, um, no, it doesn't taste good. And also we have the, the pig feet. I know some of you are, ooh, pig feet. No, we lo I love pig feet. And if they are salty, oh, they are the best. You know, the regular one without salt tastes the same. So salt is very important, at least for me. So Jesus was talking about salt, and that's the word that popped up into me when I read the scripture. So I said, well, seasoning. Oh, seasoning, seasoning, seasoning. These days we have refrigeration, so we don't need for preservatives. But yes, I use it for seasoning. So when I heard the word, when I hear the word seasoning, you know, some things pop up in my mind. If, if you are as a, if you are like here, I say seasoning, what comes to your mind? Uh, oh, oh, you're my kind of girl. Adobo, go, yeah, or any adobo. Yeah. yeah ad 
Yeah, yeah, it's salt. It has a, a lot of salt. So adobo, what else? Seasoning? Parsley. Oregano. Those are herbs. Pepper. Pepper. Of course, it is popular. Even when I season my food and I bring it to church, my two churches uh, are Anglo. I, I, I'm a United Methodist pastor, and I have two churches in Lebanon. And even though I bring sometimes during Christmas time my pernil, they even ask for salt and pepper. <laughs> I think that that's something that I cost them to. But again, seasoning, yeah, all these, uh, you know, ingredients or, or we call herbs and spices. And in my mind, also, I, I confuse sometimes herbs and spices. But seasoning, you know, I look into the dictionary because many times I use words thinking that I know what I mean. Or people think, I think that people know what I mean. But sometimes it's not the same. But seasoning, you salt, herbs, or spices adding to food. And this is what I learned what I was preparing for this, to enhance the flavor. And seasoning means to bring out or intensify the natural flavor of the food, and this is important, without changing it. Hmm. Without changing it. So seasoning, seasonings are usually added near the end of the cooking period, but in my culture, yeah, you have to season that poultry and, and that meat before you put it there. At least one day before. And we know the difference, believe me. Seasonings are usually, uh, you know, something that we add, even if it's not in our culture. We, we taste it. And the most common seasonings are, of course, we mentioned some salt, pepper, and acids, such as lemon juice. So there are four basic categories of seasonings, again, ingredients, like the salt, the pepper, sugar or sweeteners, and the acids, as I said. And each one underscores an arrange of flavors within a dish, contributing to its unique flavor and add depth and tantalize the taste of the food. And seasoning, as I said, usually is with herbs or spices, and I confuse those two terms many times. Herbs have been used for cooking since, since prehistoric times, and their uh, use is documented in many cultures, like in cave paintings. I didn't know that. That herbs are portrayed in cave paintings. Yeah, it's a long, long, long time ago. <laughs> Early humans may have discovered that wrapping meat in leaves enhanced its taste. The ancient Greeks and Romans, yeah, they value herbs and spices for cooking, for medicine, and for status symbol. I remember, yeah, the Greeks used those leaves in their, yeah. Yeah, the Laura, well, yeah. <laughs> and they, oh no, they didn't do that. Middle Ages, herbs were used in medicine and to improve the taste of food. And of course, in 1920s, 21st century, we discovered new traits to enhance the flavor and mix them like the adobo. You know, it's a mix of herbs and, and spices. So, Herbs have been used to enhance the flavor of food, not only for preservation, medicine, symbolism, but also to just us to taste. I, I wish I can go around the world and be one of those that taste the food, the critics. Oh, I can do that. <laughs> spices. Well, spices, uh, the earliest written record of spices come from ancient uh, Egyptian, Chinese, and Indian cultures. So a long, long trace of herbs and spices to enhance the, the flavor of the food. Now, spice. Spice is an aromatic or pungent vegetable substance used to flavor food like cloves. And, oh, clo can you call cloves or cloves? Cloves. 
Yeah, don't go there. My, my congregations, they laugh at me when I cannot pronounce uh, things, but that's okay. English is complicated. It's dove and dove and love and cloth. Never mind. Cloves, pepper or cumin. So spices are individual ingredients used to add flavor and aroma to the dishes. While seasoning are blends of herbs and spices and other flavorings used to enhance the taste of the food. And there are rules for seasoning that I uh, didn't know. Rule number one, taste as you go. Oh, that's a good one. You know, we have our own techniques. Those of you that cook and me that cook, we have our own techniques. So my um, mother used to do the, take the salt and do like this. And that was it. And then I asked her, mom, are you going to taste it? Nope. Are you sure that it tastes good? Yeah. And then when I was going to write recipes for, from her, how much salt you put in that? Just a little bit. No measure. But let me tell you that her food, I miss a lot. With that, and then she put some oregano there. And that, you know, she can put in spices and, and herbs in her food. But some of us, they, we have a spoon. We put it there. Good or mm, it needs a little bit of salt or pepper. Me, I have my own technique. I take the the spoon that I used to stir and then I put some in my palm and then I and then I just adjust. Taste as you go. See Second Corinthians thirteen five seven says, examine yourself to see if your faith is genuine. Test yourselves. Surely you know that Jesus Christ is among you. If not, you have failed the test of genuine faith. Oh, yes, I think I do that all the time, tasting my, my faith. Am I good on my faith? Or do I need just to do something else to get it stronger in that? That flavor has to be enhancing me. Alrighty. Rule number two, stick to the theme. Certain flavors belong together. Well, I don't put any cinnamon in my, if my soup. You know, I put salty herbs and that, but I, I don't put cinnamon in my soup. We have to remember that we are beloved by God. Regardless of our achievements, failures, or social status, God can provide a stable foundation for a good sense of self and mental well-being. Stick to the theme. And remember John 3.16 that we know by heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. We belong to God. That's the theme. Stick to it. No matter what is going on in your life or in my life. Be layers of flavor. That's the third rule. There are mul multiple ways to describe the stages or layers of a Christian growth. Well, I'm going to mention quickly five of them. The stage seeker. This is the one that uh, we want to learn more. Who's this Jesus? Is he really God? Did he really die for my sin? Is he going to be able to forgive what I have done? And then we have those questions as seekers. And then the next stage is believer. And at this stage, we accept Christ as our Savior. And we build upon that relationship with him and God. And we talk with God. And God knows that we believe in him for everything in our lives. And he's with us every step of the way. Knowing that God was, God is, and God will be. 
Then the disciple follower stage is a stage of Christian growth. It is to get deeper on learning who Christ is and how we better follow his teachings and his example. And then the stage of disciple maker and leader, a stage of Christian growth when we already are full with all the ones before and we want to share it with the rest of the world. And we want those who believe to be like us, disciple, followers, and makers of disciples. And then the last stage that I have is suffering servant. And at this stage, many of us reach, kind of, I think I, I'm so-so at that stage, is when one is willing to do anything for Jesus. Anything. At this stage, we are a well-seasoned product. Balance. Rule number four, pair contrasting elements. Oh, this is the one that I say, yeah, this is the one that I need to believe by faith because I belong to God, but I'm very imperfect, and God is perfect. So how can we pair these two up? But we can. Some of the characteristics also of a Christian are like that too. We have to be humble, but at the same time, we have to be assertive. And then we have to be meekness, but determined. We have to be patient, but prompt, if we want to spread the good news. We have to forgive, but then we have to remember. And loving and despise. Yeah, all of those are in us as Christians. More interesting is that God and us, and us and God, mm, contrasting flavors, but here we are, saying like Paul wrote to the Romans, if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord, so then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. So this theme is kind of, yeah, we are here because we belong. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and everything else will be added up to us. And rule number five, the final one. That is the one that I am continually on. Salt, taste, and repeat if necessary. Oh, yes. Salt, taste, and repeat if necessary. You see, we need to do that every day of our lives. And then we need to uh, ask God and say to God what the psalmist said. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And I have to remember that also in 2 Corinthians it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is or she a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And Titus says, we are saved through Christ's mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah, I have to keep salt, taste, and repeat. Mm, I do that very often. So remember the rules. Taste as you go. Stick to the theme. Build layers of flavors. Bear contrasting elements. Salt taste and repeat if necessary see being the salt of the world is a big responsibility it is not only to preserve jesus teachings with integrity or to enhance god's essence in the world for me it is to season a world that is without taste a world in need of those spices and herbs that provide additional enrichment to life Seasoning is needed in a world lost in other flavors that are not congruent with God. Our spiritual seasoning is not only for us to spread into the world, but also for us to seek for ourselves and in us. We are the salt of the world. And remember, salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, 
how will you season it? To make a good, great season mix with top of the shelf ingredients like grace, mercy, forgiveness, endurance, understanding. By being empathic, gentleness, faithful, all oh, discipleship, obedience, humbleness, diligence, righteousness. And the two that I enjoy the most, joy and a lot, a lot of love. Well, you see, you see it's getting late. Oh, please don't hesitate. Put a little love in your heart and the world will be a better place and the world will be a better place for you and me. You just wait and see. So no matter what you put in the world and in you, be the salt. And I didn't know that there were so many it's salt, regular. This is sea salt, kosher salt, um, regular salt, and pink salt. I'm telling you, they confuse me a lot. And I use gloves. This will smell good. I put these ones with my ham, with the pineapple and ham. Ooh, it smells so good. And you know that there is a specific seasoning for everything. So this is for seafood. So when you think about seasoning the world, eh, yes, yes, and of course the pepper, that's a popular one, salt, salt and pepper. And it doesn't matter who you are, if you're gloves or your chili or, yeah, cinnamon or the adobo. Thank you so much for saying that. Woohoo! Remember, you can use all of them, even the Sazon Goya. I mean, it comes in other brands, sorry. I'm not saying Goya is the only one. But just be those to the world and season a world that is lost. Let us be the salt of a tasteless world. Amen. <laughs>